Rani Lakshmi Bai, born Minakanika or Mani, was drawn by as a child, motherless by age four. She was brought up by her father, who was very proud of her. Her companions were Nana Sahib and Tantra Jopi, though they were much older than she was. Manu was called Chabili because of her playful nature. Let us read a fictional account on a marriage proposal at the age of 30. The characters are Manu, the 13 year old, intelligent, and strong willed girl, Murupan Tambe, Manu's 40 years old father, and the advisor of the Peshwa Baji Rao, Taima, the 60 year old, grey haired woman. Manu's nursemaid, Nana Sahib, the 17-year-old adopted son of the Peshwa Ma and Manu's classmate and friend. A quiet afternoon in Bethel, a town in Uttar Pradesh, in 80s. A room in the palace of Peshwa Bajirao too. Naima calling out in a loud voice. Manu! Manu! Where are you? Catching this girl is getting more and more difficult every day. She thinks she can do everything that boys do. Seriously, I don't understand her. Uh, where is Manu? I have some excellent news for her. Only God knows where she is. She might be cl climbing a tree, riding a horse, or sword fighting. Every day I try to teach her to cook. She runs away somewhere. But where can she be? Her lessons are done for the day. I just saw Guruji leaving the palace. Your decision, Sriman, to educate Manu has made her absolutely disobedient. She refuses to learn to cook, to chop vegetables, or even to plait her hair. She has become a bundle of no's. No this, no that. But Daima, education is very important for girls. I dream of a day when every city will have school for girls and universities where boys and girls can both pursue higher studies. What strange things you think of, Sriman? Meanwhile, Manu is becoming more and more stubborn every single day. She is becoming so hard to handle. Daima, I am grateful to you for looking after Manu since her mother died. You have been like a mother to her. But you must understand that Manu is stubborn by nature. This is a weakness today, but one day it will be her strength. But Sriman, what use is teaching Manu maths and science when... She will have to take care of a household. When she grows up, how will she manage that? Daima, I want Manu to be as knowledgeable and accomplished as any boy. I believe that girls have an equal right to education as much as boys. It is because of our ignorance that we keep girls changed to, to the kitchen. But where is Manu? And thus, Nana Sahib. I can answer that question. I just saw her on her horse with her long hair streaming behind her, uh, racing along the orchard with Tatya Tope in her hot pursuit. As soon as her lesson was off, she was off. Daima hitting forehead with the palm of her hand. Oh, what is to be done with this girl? Thank you for the information, Nana Sahib. Sahib, by the way, how is Manu doing at her lessons? Nana Sahib, sitting on the stool at the Tambe's right. She is brilliant, Uncle. She is better than Tatya and me. Guruji is very pleasant with her. It's not just studies. She regularly beats us at sword fighting, kite flying, marbles, horse riding and hand-to-hand -hand combat too. That gives me great pleasure, Nana Sahib. But you both must try to beat her. Manu rushes in with a riding crop in her hand. Laughing happily, she hurriedly sits down at Tambi's feet. Father, I beat Tantya Tope again. Just the other day, I beat him at sword fighting. His fist might be over it. And now, this is your defeat. 
Congratulations, my dear. Look at this girl. Manu, there is mud on your face. Your hair are white. And your sleeve is torn? Oh, that. A branch struck me when I was riding. And I got a little scratch. Daima, don't worry so much. A little scratch? It is bleeding. Is someone there? Bring some turmeric and herbs, please. An attendant enters with a plate of turmeric and herb. Careful, Manu. Father, when I ride on the horse, I feel like I'm flying. It's an exhilarating feeling to be so free. I didn't even notice a scratch. Oh, this is a deep cut. You must keep your arm in rest. I know you have sword classes. I don't want to strain your hand by holding the sheet. Yes, Manu, you must rest today. But, Manu, listen to me. I have some news for you. The king of Jhansi has sent a marriage proposal for you to our Peshwa Bajirao too. He and I want to know whether you will give your consent to this proposal. Good Lord, Shri Ma'am. Why are you asking Manu for her consent? In our time and even today, our parents arranged our marriage with whom we have not even seen. But we happily got married. But that is exactly I don't want to do. Girls must be given the freedom to choose their husbands. I hope and pray that one day in the future, girls in our country will have this freedom. I want Manu to have the choice of accepting or rejecting a marriage proposal. If she says yes, the marriage will take place next year. Father, tell me about the king of Jhansi. What type of person is he? King Gangadhar Rao is a learned and capable king. Soon after his marriage, his wife died. They didn't have any children. He has been unwell for some time now and Jhansi needs someone who, someone who can be a strong queen. Do you want to be that strong queen, Manu? The people of Jhansi need someone like you. You are free. Father, you once told me we must put others' welfare over our own desires. If the people of Jhansi need me, I am prepared to work for their good. I accept the proposal. Bravo! Spoken like a queen. I am very happy with your decision, Manu. I will send word to Jhansi. Shall I show you the gifts that the king of Jhansi has sent you with the marriage proposal? Gifts? But why, Baba? It is a traditional custom, my child. Enter a line of servants. Carrying huge brass plates loaded with rich clothes, jewelry, dried fruits, nuts, sweetmeats. Money examines them with a bold expression. Is that all? I thought the gifts would be more interesting. These are useless. Send them back to the masses that I am neither in need of them nor in awe of them. Can I go now, Baba? There are two more gifts, Manu, that you may find interesting. Shall we look at them? Well, yes, Baba, if you insist. They all move to the courtyard outside. There stands a beautiful white house, its rings held by an attendant. Another attendant enters, carrying a beach well sword and carries to money. Wonderful! This is a very horse with great strength and speed. I shall carry him with me if I ever need to fight for Jassi. I shall call him Badal. This with great strength and can cut through an enemy like a knife through butter. So you like your gifts, Manu? Very much, Baba. Please convey my gratitude and pleasure to the king of Jassi when you write to him. I will, my dear. Father, please let me go for sword fighting. I have an idea. I will keep my wounded hand behind and fight with one hand. Let me try. Bravo. Spoken like a queen. Go, my child. You may have blessings in all that you do. Rani Lakshmi Bai ruled the kingdom of Jhasi. After her husband's death, she fought bravely to protect her kingdom from the British rule. During the rebellion, she made the daring escape by jumping off the walls of Fort in Jhasi onto her horse. With her adopted son tied to her back, 
she was killed while fighting the british in gwalior 1858 thank you